I'm Melinda Sai. I am a cardiologist and vice chair for Heart Vascular Thoracic Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I also direct our hypertrophic cardiomyopathy center. As we have over the last few years, there's been an explosion of data related to cardiac myosin inhibitors in treatment of obstructive HCM led by Mavacampton and the three randomized controlled trials. In April 2022, Mavacampton was approved in the United States by, by the FDA uh, as the first available p uh, drug for obstructive symptomatic HCM patients who are on at least one background therapy. Now, all of us know the mechanism of action of cardiac myosin inhibitors predisposes that is a small but definite proportion of patients may develop LV systolic dysfunction and potentially heart failure. So FDA was rightfully concerned about that. And what they said was they approved Mavacampton under something called the RAMS program, Risk Evaluation Mitigation Strategy. So as the FDA approves the drug, there's something called the, the label the U.S. Uh, prescribing index, USPI. The paper label that goes out, there's, there may be a black box warning, but FDA felt compelled that they, want, they needed to have something beyond just the label instructions uh, because they perceive they, there were enough safety concerns, potentially, and they wanted to make sure that the patients got the appropriate benefit by putting the right program in place. That is what the REMS program is. It has basically three important stakeholders. The patients, of course, the physicians, prescribing physicians, nurse practitioners, as well as the pharmacies that prescribe this drug. And everybody has to sign in, and, and it's like a con contractual agreement wherever the patient, the physician, everybody signs in, gets at the, the, the prescribers get appropriate training uh, on how to prescribe, etc., so the, the good news is this way we could, con we could track 100% of real-world Mavacampton prescriptions under the REMS program. So automatically we have the best real-world registry uh, of, of Mavacampton, uh, the most extensive. The purpose is to, for safety and efficacy. So it's not, it's not like a clinical trial where you, where you have 100 variables we are tracking. They want to see who was on it, what was the dose, what happened to the, uh, how many people had a gradient reduction to less than 30 and less than 20, how many people had EF drop less than 50, how many needed heart failure hospitalization, what were the drug-drug interactions uh, that we had to work on. And I'll touch base upon that. So we are presenting at AHA 2024, uh, the first 22 months worth of experience in about 6,000 patients who got uh, prescribed Mavacampton. About 5,500 patients, the drug was initially dispensed. The mean age is about 65 or so. Major, uh, and uh, bottom line is, what we found was, essentially, out of these 5,500 patients, the, the proportion of patients with EF drop, less than 50% was very low, about 4 to 5%, better than 4.6%. Patients who needed heart failure hospitalization was even lower in the 1% to 2% range. And patients who had an EF drop plus heart failure hospitalization was less than 1%. 1 so in real-world experience, highly safe. There were more than 29,000 patient forms submitted. And in these patient forms, the proportion of people who had a forms with EF drop less than 50% was less than 2%, and the other side effects as I, that I alluded to were significantly lower. So first goal of FDA was safety achieved. So it, we can prescribe this safely, and it is safe. Then efficacy. So the data has demonstrated that 70% patients, the EF, uh, the, the gradients dropped to less than 30%, uh, there were more about 730 patients. We also reduced the dose because the gradient dropped to less than 20, uh, 20 millimeters, so highly effective. The other thing we learned was in the about 1,900 patients in whom the drug was taken for more than a year, 
the results were very similar. So sustained effect and sustained demonstration of safety. Additionally, about the majority of the patients got the efficacy using only 5 and 10 milligram doses. Very few per, uh, patients needed 15 milligram doses. And the drug-drug interaction, because mavacamptin is excreted to a cytochrome P450 system, there was a concern that could there be drug-drug interactions that could create a problem. That happened, or the, the, the distraction from that occurred in less than 1% patient, in whom that was recognized, and quickly we switched to alternative drugs or lowered the mavacamptin dose, so 1%. So safety, efficacy, and convenience, the three things that uh, the REMS program sought out to test, we, we are able to demonstrate in this report from the first 22 months. It is pretty gratifying to see that what you see in a clinical trial, we are able to replicate even better because some of the in Valor trial, the proportion of people with ejection fraction dropped to less than 50% was much higher, probably because we were more aggressive in automatically dosing patients and maybe they were sicker patients. Here, in real world, most people would expect in real world the incidence of side effects would be much higher. We did not see that. In fact, we saw the exact opposite. And, you know, this is, most cardiologists are not used to the REMS program. So we had to quickly learn new tricks of the trade. We have, we've learned that. We are using it well. We are demonstrating that using this, not guarantees, but is associated with, with significant safety uh, and and, and as well as efficacy. So I think, you know, it's, it's been a learning curve, but I think we are better off as a HCM community now, uh, given the knowledge that we have, the, we have these government mandated safety guardrails that have worked really well.